real talk. Whenever the whole family drama bit starts to flare up, something dark or terrible or frustrating happens from about the day after Thanksgiving until, well, Christmas, I secretly love to sing It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year. Sometimes... Sometimes I don't sing it secretly. I just I just sing it. I'm afraid that my kids are going to start to associate it with terrible things that they grow up. I'm creating some sort of trauma response where they'll they'll flinch whenever they hear it like a fire alarm. It'll be like Pavlov's emergency. This is how I handle stuff. Lord have mercy on me, a sinner. I make fun of it. I make fun of the things that I'm afraid of. Uh, from childish to uh, less uh, less childish, I don't know if it actually keeps me sane, but it keeps me moving. I don't know, though, that it counts as what our Lord is urging us towards in the epistle lesson today, to rejoice in the Lord always. Always. Because at best, I'm just sort of belittling the things that I don't like, which I guess everybody does in one way or another, from mocking the situations you can't control because laughing is a little bit better than crying to the confrontation that you sort of have between John and the Levites. Who are you supposed to be to John the Baptist preaching the word, repent to the people who don't want to? Are you the Christ? Are you Elijah? What do you think you have to say to us? This is in all of these things, the struggle that all of us have in this place. Everybody is looking for something joyful to find, something to rejoice in. But our Lord tells us to rejoice in the Lord always. And this time of the year, it leaves me feeling like Santa's helper at the mall, making sure that everybody stands up just right to take pictures, standing next to something nobody really believes in anymore. And that's hard to find joy in. When the expectations are that low, it's easier to mock it because it's absurd to find God in situations like these. But it's the little words that actually make the theology great. It's the littlest words that sometimes carry the most comfort. Paul doesn't say rejoice in the situation always. He says rejoice in the Lord. In. It's not pretend to be happy all the time or pretend to like all the things that you don't actually like. True joy is not found in the stuff, but in the Lord, which is why people gathered around him, which is why the crowds flocked to John the Baptist, even those who didn't want to hear what he had to say. This is why we gather in church on Christmas. This is why we go the rest of the Sundays, too. We can rejoice in the Lord. We take shelter in his presence. We receive his gifts. We stand in and under his, his shelter. We receive body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins so that we can do more than just sort of laugh away the things that we cannot control and make idols of the things that we think we can. Rejoice in Christ because now we are free from the cares of everything that would otherwise leave us with trauma responses. Rejoice in Christ, not by shutting off the things that are wrong, but by looking for the God who has actually promised to join us in this mess, die for us, and rise again to carry us out again. Christmas without Advent doesn't work. Christmas just looks back, but Advent looks for God. Where has God shown up for you? And yes, he was born in the manger Yes, he will come again on that last great day, but also, yes, he advents in word and in sacrament in your church for you to receive mercy, for you to have something to rejoice in when everything else has fallen apart. What do you value? At Concordia University, Nebraska, we value the equipping of church workers for lives of service to both church and world. In a culture where our faith can often be met with derision, our world needs ardent Christian leaders to rise to the helm and steer the next generation of Christ followers into new territory. You have the God-given gifts. We have the tools to uncover and develop them. We are Nebraska's university with values.